Hi, my name is Stephanie. And these are my two adorable and handsome sons. And that is my ex-husband, attorney Dennis Sperling. He practices personal injury law and will be more than happy to help you with claims arising from automobile accidents. He doesn't get paid unless you get paid. And as we first wives know, the more our ex-husbands get paid, the more we get paid. So let me help him help you. Call Mr. Sperling at 713 <laughs> 229 0770. Call my daddy! daddy. Dramatization. Bad drivers cause car wrecks. Not paying attention to the road, operating electronic devices, and drinking while driving can lead to serious injuries. If you've been the victim of a bad driver, a trial lawyer may be able to help you recover money to pay your medical bills, reimburse you for lost wages, and compensate you for the pain caused by your injuries. If you, your friends, or family have been injured in a car wreck, contact me, Attorney Dennis Sperling, toll free, 866-529-2444. I'm here to help. Hi, my name is Dennis Sperling. I'm not a lawyer, but my daddy is. Yeah. If you been were in a car accident, call my daddy. No need to scream and yell like a little kid. Yeah, I know right. My daddy will fight for your rights. Yeah, fight for your rights. If you been involved in a car accident, call my daddy returning Dennis Sperling. Hello, I'm attorney Dennis Sperling. If you've been injured in a car wreck, call me at 713-229-0770. Call my daddy, daughter, daddy. And why do I say all black men don't have children? Let's see. All right. So this is from the United States Census Bureau. If you look here, the percentages of black men who are fathers by age group, 3.1%, 15 to 19, 24.9%, age 20 to 29, 62.5%, 30 to 39, 80.5% age 40 to 49. So these are the percentage of black men who are fathers are when they become dads. Keep that in mind. Let's continue. Now, this is how you average that out. You put those three numbers together, you get 42.75% of black men have children. Any number below 50, age 15 or any number above age 49 is too low to even factor in. That's why that's not up there. Because yes, there are some kids that have children at young ages, which is crazy and absurd. And there are some men who have children after age uh, 49, but the numbers are so low. They only took the, the categories, the four categories that have the most children. So this is where you get the average of 42.75% of black men are fathers. Now, what that means is 57.25% of black men do not have children. So what does that tell you? You cannot blame all black men for the reason why we have such a high single mother, our children born at a wedlock rate, because women are having sex and creating children with the same men. Let's continue. 69.4% of all black children are born out of wedlock into 42.775% of black men. Common question. How can this happen? NBA young boy has two women pregnant at the same time, and he is on his 11th and 12th child at age 23. I believe he has nine baby mothers. What does that tell you? One man, nine women. Let's continue. Now, this is another one. 
Father of 33 kid claps back at social media, calling him irresponsible and nasty after his picture goes viral. He has what is uh what is I think this guy, the 33 year old, he has like upwards of maybe 20 baby mamas on his own. And then you have the rapper, Jay Fizzle. He has 22 kids, and it says rumors are saying that he may have as many as 22 different baby mothers. Did y'all hear what I said? That's one man with potentially or possibly 22 different baby mothers. That is how you get the numbers that we have. And the reason why 57% of black men don't have children, based on the statistical numbers, I have the references here. It's from the U.S. Census Bureau. It is from blackdemographics.com. Pew Research, and also I have a study in regards to the statistics about single fathers. So the additional 30.6% of Black children are born to the 33% of Black men married. As of now, there are 33% of Black men married. To summarize, these are the percentages of Black men who have fathers in this age group. Like I said, I averaged those out. It came to 42.75%. Black men are fathers. 57.25% of black men don't have children. 69.4% of all the black children are born out of wedlock. And they are born to 42.75% of the black men. Those are the black men that are having the majority of the kids. The additional 30.6 black children are born to 33% of married black men. This is how we get those numbers. So the reason why I did this is because I hate seeing the fact that every time the conversation of children at a wedlock or single mothers come up, all black men get blamed. But as you guys can see here, the majority of black men under the blood, me say me under the blood. Jesus cover me under the blood. Under the blood, me say me under the blood. Jesus, you may cover me under the blood. In the morning when me wake up, and the blood that Jesus me take up. Now when me feel like me, I go break up. Put the blood on me face just like a makeup. In the morning when me wake up, and the blood that Jesus me take up. And when me feel like me heart break up, put the blood on me face just like a makeup. Under the blood, under the blood, under the blood, Jesus cover me. Jesus, you can cover me. And that they blood me. What's up, what's up, welcome back to the broadcast with Uncle D, baby. <laughs> Shout out to everybody in the chat room, man. Y'all hit the number one button, man. I'm back from a nice, friendly vacation, man. As you guys know, uh, this is my birthday month, so I wanted to try to get one in when I could. So uh, I did a little quick vacation down in Puerto Rico. Had a good time, me and my lady, man, and... Uh, it was a good time. I'm all I did. I will say that I do. I do miss you guys. Uh, when I get away from the school, just having you fellas to interact with. So big shout out to everybody in the chat room. Y'all hit the number one button. If you're happy, I'm back. <laughs> hit the number one button. If you, if, if you're happy, uncle D is back safe and sound from the PR. Puerto Rico, no passport necessary. Everybody who got warrants, <laughs> everybody who got them child support issues, you can go down to Puerto Rico and uh, you don't need a passport, baby. But uh, 
Big shout out to my man, Christopher Williams. Thank you so much, family. I appreciate y'all, man. Uh, but anyway, anyway, let's see. Big shout out to Michael J. Antonio Schuler, Sleep with Third Eye Open. Uh, who else we got up in here? We got AWS 21st. Big shout out to you, Black Man Swimming. Thank you so much. Who else we got? A Florida Man. Big shout out to Florida Man, Broken Blade. Uh, Urban Eagle, all my guys up in here, man. Y'all, uh, we're a little light tonight, but that's all right. That's all right. We're going to get this thing populating. We're going to get it crackling. We're going to do it big tonight. Anyway, so I want to, uh, first of all, welcome you all. My name is Dennis Sperling. I'm a podcaster. I'm also known as Uncle D. The fellas call me Uncle D, man, because I'm like a mama's baby brother. I'm the uncle. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm the man that, um, you know, a lot of young men didn't have in their life. And I, I talk to them straight up. I don't, I don't hold back. I speak to them in the language they can understand. I'm not pretentious. I'm not faking. I'm not pretending. I have uh, very little or nothing to gain from, uh, lying to these young men. So I don't do it. You understand what I'm saying? I speak to them like, um, you know, you would want. Uh, a man to speak to your son like you would want a man to speak to your husband I tell brothers all the time you got a good woman you got a good woman don't cheat I tell them that all the time so it's not that I'm giving bad advice it's not that I'm giving advice you wouldn't want a lot of you ladies don't like everything I'm saying you want to be able to curtail <laughs> big words you want to be able to curtail what I say but it's not going to be like that. We're not doing that. We're going to talk to these men straight up, and I'm always maintain my integrity. You understand what I'm saying? I'm always going to speak to men like men should speak to each other honestly and forthright. On top of that, I talk to these men, and I give them the same advice I give my own sons. Big man, big shout-out to Wrench Turner. Thank you so much. That's my D-Town homeboy, Dallas in the house. Um and uh, who else we got? Big Knox here for the gospel. Yeah, man, we preaching the word over here, baby. We doing it big. Y'all can hear me clearly. Let me know. Let me know you can hear clear. Okay. Let me know that. Let, let's make sure we got that popping. Oh, we want to make sure the uh, the clarity of of the sound system is 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 good and what it should be. You feel me? Who else we got up in here, man? Yeah, we enjoying ourselves. So um. Anyway, I'm just I'm queuing up a couple of pictures because I want to share with you a few pictures that I have because, you know, y'all, y'all like family. And I enjoy sharing my photographs with you fellas, man. It's it's all good. Maybe we should do stuff like that. You see, you see the, the end result of years of sacrifice. And, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, a, it's a wonderful thing because a lot of people will tell you do this, do that and the other. But like, for what's the what's the point? You understand? What's the whole point? What's the goal? So, uh, as I said before, I'm gonna I'm gonna pull up a few little pictures, man. I just went Thursday, Thursday even took that that flight that flight down there to uh, Puerto Rico, and um, it was raining. You know, it was raining down there at first, but you know, like most Caribbean places, the weather clears up pretty quick, so. Uh, I got a few good days in. I uh, first thing, of course, as you guys know, went down with my uh, my beautiful fiance here. Let's see if I, if I can pull her picture up. That's a beautiful day down there. My beautiful, soon to be twenty three year old fiance with her fine self. She's a cooking, cleaning, fine woman, number top five percent in her class in law school. So you really can't ask for much more. So, you know, we do enjoy each other's country, company. You know what I'm saying? Uncle D is, as you say, I got that. I've been drinking squint, <laughs> popping off, man. Uh, let me see uh, what else we got up in here. Yeah. So, uh, you know, we're just, just out and about in Puerto Rico doing our thing. This is the view from the hotel room. Beautiful view. Um, what else we got going on? Of course, she. She works out every day, so she drug my butt down there, and I got a little bit in. Um, as I said, it was raining for a minute, and, uh, you know, it's all good. Kind of, you know, a little, little wet and rainy, but uh, we got over that. And then we ended up uh, going out. She met some people, 
I was at the bar. I said, baby, go make some friends. You know what I'm saying? So we was chilling a little bit. I bought them some shots. But of course, you know, Uncle D, I like to drink that Don Perignon. You know what I'm saying? I like rosé. I like champagne. I kind of stay away from that uh, that hard liquor. So, you know, I, I, I'll buy a couple of bottles of rosé or Don P. That's that Don Perignon. It's supposed to bubble. <laughs> it just be like that sometimes. Somebody, uh, anybody, yeah, that's what's up. You can't really see it. It's kind of blurry right now. But, uh, yeah, man, we had a good time down in Puerto Rico and uh, end up hitting the beach. I uh, got a little time to reflect, relax. That's that Puerto Rican flag down there. But uh, I got a chance to just sit back and look at some sunsets, man. I that was a beautiful sunset, man. I just got a chance to sit back and look at that sunset. I was posted up. Um, just relaxing, man. And, and you know, it's good to have a woman who knows just leave you alone. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> just leave me alone. Let me just sit back. Uh, shout out to Coley on the War, man. I really like these these t-shirts right here. I got this. That's an AR-15 on the front. I am definitely a 2A advocate. I'm definitely pro uh second amendment so uh it was it was cool uh to get a shirt like that but man this is like one of my favorite shirts is comfortable well made but man i'm just sitting on the porch looking at the sunset enjoying myself you understand what i mean and um shit man i had a good time man i needed it you know i needed to get away it was starting to kind of just be a drag you know as you guys know this is not my sole source of income. It's not my only source of income. You know, I'm a trial lawyer and um, I love practicing law. I love doing well. Let me say it like that. I don't necessarily love practicing law, but I'm excellent at it. And so, you know, because I'm good at it, I make money doing it. It's stressful. You see what I'm saying? Now, for you guys who don't know, this is a this is actually a hotel lobby that I'm in. And um, this is a hotel lobby for a club called 58. I didn't really like the club. Shout out to my man, Jackson Doss. He says, let's go, Blizzard King. And look, man, I'm giving y'all some game. I should have called this Passport Bros, but we're going to get on these hard-headed uh, single mothers in a minute. But I just wanted you guys to kind of, you know, shine with me for a minute, man, and just see how it's done. You know, you can, you can shoot down here. I think the round trip tickets was a couple thousand bucks. I don't even know if it was that much. I think it was uh, maybe a couple thousand dollars. Got a hotel for like fifteen hundred bucks. It's like three, four hundred dollars a night. Um, this was on me. Me buying the champagne that was on me. But you can, you can get down there and back for two, have a good time for about four thousand, five thousand dollars. So, and um, you know that's like a little pocket vacation. You see what I mean? Now, of course, you're gonna if you if you're going extravagant. You know, you want to spend money. It's money to be spent. Puerto Rico is like the New York of uh, South America. You see what I'm saying? And New York City is South America. So if you want to spend money, you can spend money. But uh, we just went there for three days to kind of get away. I didn't have my sons. And so I always try to make it a habit of, you know, breaking up the monotony and um, get, getting out there a little bit, you know what I'm saying? Um, making sure I get, get all my time in, uh, you know, cause you know, life is short, of course, and you need to be able to relax. Um, but, uh, this is the benefit of years and years of hard work, you know, nine years of higher education. Um, after that, 23 years of practicing law of which five years, uh, working for other people, 17 years of working for myself. And I'm still, I'm still going, <laughs> you feel me? And, uh, you know, you just got to recognize that, you know, hard, hard work pays off, especially if you're working in the right area. So all you guys in school, my man, Jackson Doss said, let's go Blizzard King. And Maurice Harris says, Uncle D, how are you? I'm good. I'm good. Uncle D is doing good. And uh, for you guys who, um, who don't know about me, you know, you think I'm just some dude. I want to share something with y'all, man. It's something I'm real proud of. So you go to, uh, I'll slide this over here. If you go over here to um, 
this little channel right here just has uh ratings and whatnot. This is me, this Demond Sperling. That's my hood name. All of us have a hood name, Demond. <laughs> It says 22 years, but it'll be 23 years in October. So I'm going in my 23rd year. I got a perfect 5-0 rating, you know, 33 reviews. Best lawyer in the world, Mr. Sperling, got me 525,000. I'll tell you that is more money than I thought I would get um, by a long way after I fell and got hurt. Uh, let me see here. Working with his firm has been amazing. My case was referred to him, the law firm. So, you know, um, you know, I'm really out here doing this. You see what I'm saying? Um, I'm, I'm really out here doing this, you know. And this is for $18,000 settlement. What else we got up in here? You know, so I got all these reviews, 2021, all the way up to 2022. You see what I'm saying? So, you know, this is hard work. So even while I'm here on, on the internet, Talking to you brothers on the internet streets, I'm still working. And, uh, you know, I'm proud of what I've done. You know what I'm saying? I'm proud of what I've done. I'm proud of um, my accomplishments. And that's the payoff, you know. You see, uh, principal owner since 2005, Tulane University, LLM, and environmental master's in law. So I could actually teach law school if I want to. Southern University Law Center, doctorate of jurisprudence. Um, Grambling State University, Bachelor's of Science, Texas Southern University, Master's Degree of Science, uh, Texas Southern University, PhD, Doctorate, uh, Bar of Texas since 2005. Of course, I had, a, uh, of course, in 2017, um, I got the ABVO 2017 Client's Choice, same thing in 2016. You know, and so, uh, yeah, man, I really, I'm really out here doing this. You see, uh, let me see what else I got in here. Associations. It's, it's some more in here, some more associations. But uh, anyway, I'm saying all this to say, uh, brothers, that, um, you know, hard work pays off in the end. But the critical thing is, um you know, you got to ask yourself what kind of man you're going to be, you know, and it takes a lot. It takes a lot, a lot. And here's a uh, license in four states, Illinois, New York, Texas, Louisiana. Um, you see what I'm saying? Since 2000, 2006, 2013, 2014, eligible practice. You see what I'm saying? So I'm everywhere, you know, but like I was saying, and shout out to all the hard working brothers out there. So, so here's the thing, family, and here's what I want to share with y'all. It takes a lot to be a successful man in this world. And if you don't have a man teaching you how to be a man, if you don't have a strong man, a, a man who can at least lay the, uh, give you a heads up on what, what it's going to take and what you're going to have to deal with and what you got to prepare for, then you're going to have a problem. You understand me? So what am I saying? If you are raised by a woman, you already are behind the eight ball. You see what I'm saying? Now, the thing I want to address right now is, I, you know, I think the glorification of single mothers is getting ridiculous. Especially if they're single mothers through their own poor choices. I hear women introduce uh, themselves stating, uh, you know, I'm a single mother as if that defines her existence. And my thing is, what, what are you looking for, a reward? You know, are you trying to play the victim card? Are you, you trying to, uh, you know, are, are you trying to state that even though you have a kid, you're single? What are you, what are you saying? Huh? What are, what are you trying to achieve by saying that? That's nothing to be proud of. You see? I mean, and guess what happens? Most people respond with some sort of adulation. Oh, that's right, girl, you go. They, she get the applause. You understand? That's not cool. See, um, I, I, I just, 
<laughs> it's like it's almost like it's an attention grabbing method. And let me clarify something. Y'all hear me? Hit the number one button if you hear me. We're a little light tonight, but that's all right. I want y'all to understand something. When I talk about single mothers, I'm obviously not talking about women who are widows. Okay? I'm talking about those women who made poor life choices and then attempt a virtue signal, especially on so social media. Now, what do I mean when I say poor life choices? That includes not using birth control during sex. None. Okay? You're not using any birth control. That's a poor choice. None at all. Not even the pull-out method. You just letting the dude run up in you like that raw and drop his baby batter inside you. If birth control is not a priority to you, ladies, you shouldn't be having sex, especially if you're not in a stable relationship. And here's the thing. Uh, if you have a child out of wedlock, if you end up getting pregnant, ladies, it's your duty to raise that child, whether you're alone or with somebody else. And you don't deserve a, a medal for that. My man Big Knox said, Black China trying to play that single mother redemption story after she made all those crazy choices for the bad. Yeah, she got her, she got her OnlyFans money and then she dipped out the game. You know what I'm saying? Think about that. Look at the precedent that she set. And let me tell you a fundamental mistake that, that women make. And I want y'all to hear me. All the dudes here, I want you fellas to hear me. Hit the number one button if you can hear me. When little boys are young, little fellas, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, about nine is when the cutoff hits. They're easier to manage. Manage. The younger they are, the easier they are to manage. But that's also easier, the easiest time for a father to instill discipline and structure in them. But see, here's the problem. The single mothers who are raising these little boys feel like, okay, well, I can manage him. And she thinks that therefore she can raise him. And what do they do? It's not a difficult job to force a little boy to sit down, eat his food, go to sleep when you say go to sleep. Drop him off at somebody else's house. And so they think, oh, I can raise him. I don't need a man. And they keep him away from the fathers, don't they? That's what they do. They keep him away from the fathers when they're young and when it's the easiest for them to be molded. Um, <laughs> I got an example I want to share with y'all, man. And let me say this, and I'm going to land this plane, but I got to get this off the ground. So I got two trees in my front yard. When I first moved into this house uh, 17 years ago, both of the trees were standing upright. They looked like that. They had metal poles. The contractors put them in there. The builders put them in there. They had metal poles attached to them with wiring around them and everything, metal wiring. And I believe after a couple of rainstorms, one of them began to lean. The other one was pretty straight. I was dealing with a lot, okay? They still saplings. They still manageable. I could have went out there on any day and straightened that tree up, spent about 20 or 30 minutes digging a hole, resetting it, and straightening that tree up. I could have did it. I didn't. Time went by. And I started noticing that one of the trees, that one tree that I never straightened up, it started going crooked. And I tried to straighten it up. I put the pole on it. I even tried to bend it back. But that iron rod was not, that iron pole or that steel pole wasn't strong enough to bend that one sapling back straight. It bent it a little bit, but now instead of going in an L shape, or not an L shape, but more like an a angle, now it went in an angle and then up. But you can see the crook in it. Well, the other one is straight up. So now one tree goes up and then grows off to the side. I mean, it's still a tree. But you can see the deformity in it. 
Why? Because as the owner of this property, I didn't get out there and make sure that tree was lined up because I was dealing with my own shit at the time. And so now I got a crooked tree in my front yard. I got one straight tree and one crooked tree. What's the story here? The story is you have got to get these kids when they're young and when they're moral, especially boys. And you have got to make sure that you discipline the hell out of them when they're little. Because it doesn't cost that much. It doesn't cost that much time and energy. You can scare the shit out of a one-year-old by yelling at them. A little time out, a, a slight tap on the back, the, the backside, they'll cry, they'll fall out crying, they'll get back up, and they'll say they're sorry and they won't do it again. It's not hard. You can't do that to a 17-year-old. You damn sure can't do it to a grown man. You see? See, when women say boys are easier to raise than girls, they're delusional. A matter of fact, that's a wonderful strategy until he's six feet tall and he want to do whatever he wants to do and uh, he want to sock your ass in the throat if you try to stop him from doing what he wants to do. See, that's when reality kicks in. And these single-parent women are completely backwards. You confusing, I can manage him, or, or, or the parents, the, trick, the, the, the ones that trip me out. You change. You not like you were when you were little. No, bitch. <laughs> I'm damn near grown. I'm 16 years old. Still in your car, sneaking hoes in the house, smoking weed, getting into all type of stuff. I'm doing the same thing my daddy did. What you thought was going to happen? You thought I was going to remain a cute little five-year-old forever? Huh? That you can dress up like a baby doll? You thought I was going to be a baby doll forever? But unfortunately, these women wait till a boy hits manhood and he becomes hard to manage before they want the father involved. That's when they want to transfer leadership and responsibility. Oh, I can't deal with him. He 13 years old now, and you can't deal with him. 13 years of him growing crooked like that, and you want that daddy to come in and set that iron rod in the ground and make him stand up straight. Oh, no. Now, see, if the father were there earlier to instill values of manhood from the start, it would help things go a lot smoother. It also would help that son know the value of his mother. Let me tell you something. That woman that you saw at the beginning of this broadcast, my ex-wife, one goddamn thing she did do right was get the F out the way when I was raising my sons. She might not have liked it. She didn't understand it. But look how successful I am in life despite all that I've had to go through. The law degrees, the successful business, no criminal record, travel wherever I want to, got money in the bank. I'm, I'm popping uh, 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 Don Perignon, drinking a whole goddamn bottle by myself. Do what I want to do, drop five Gs on a little quick pocket vacation just because I want to. Don't you want your sons to be like that? Now, irrespective of what I say about my ex-wife, she got a lot of sense. Because for the most part, I'm one of the most successful men she knows. Why wouldn't you want a man like that raising your sons? You a dumbass broad if you don't. Matter of fact, that's probably why she married me. <laughs> and I married her. Because I'm a great dad. But me being who I am and instilling discipline in my sons and teaching them how other men will treat them because that's what I do, it ain't easy. What does that do? It makes them appreciate their mother more. They like going over there and eat that cooking that she got and that soft, nice talking that she does. Hell, even my fiance, she's sweet too. 
they much rather sit up and talk to her than talk to me. It's going to be go lift some weights, do some push-ups. Uh, you know, we got stuff to do, blah, blah, blah. We rigid. She'll sit up and bake cookies with them. I ain't baking no goddamn cookies with no kids. My fiance do that. Ex-wife would do that. It may, when they have a hard father in their life, it makes them appreciate women more. You know why we have so many men who disrespect women these days? Because they don't appreciate you riding raggedy broads. They seen too much of you. They seen your panties, dirty drawers, and all the stuff you do. All them damn conversations. They can't appreciate the good part of you because they're overwhelmed by the bad part that they see. Shout out to my man, Randy Irving. He said most of the prison population is a byproduct of single mothers. 70%. Cody Marshall, my mother used to send me by my father every once in a while. And that's the problem. Any of you dudes who mentor children, mentor boys especially, you can tell a little boy who has come from a fatherless home instantaneously. Hell, I can damn near tell by the haircuts. I can damn near tell by the haircuts. I can tell by the clothes they wear. I can tell how they interact with other kids. Even under the roughest conditions, I'm talking to y'all in Baltimore. I'm talking to y'all in South Central. I'm talking to y'all in Brooklyn. Little my, uh, 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 Miami. Little Haiti. Hood-ass parts of Denver, Wisconsin. Milwaukee. I'm talking to y'all. East Coast, West Coast. Even in the worst neighborhoods, under the worst circumstances. Having a father early on in life is going to help you be more effective as a man. Do y'all hear me? You hear me? So let me tell you something else about young men. You can train a child because the child knows that he doesn't know. A little boy knows that he doesn't know. A young man, they think they know every goddamn thing. So what do you have to do with a young man? What do they have to do with these young men when they get in the military? Where my military dudes at? Army, Navy, Air Force, Marine Corps. Where y'all at? Coast Guard, Army Reserve. Where y'all at? What do you have to do with these young men when they come into the military? What's the first thing you have to do with young men when they come into the military? You can mold them. Most of them. But what do you have to do? You got to break them down. You got to break them down to a child's acceptance to rebuild them back up. What do I mean by that? You strip them of their identity. You cut their hair. You make them leave all their personal items, cell phones, everything, any contact with the outside world. You break them down to nothing. And then you run them and you push them till they're exhausted. You strip all that ego away. All their identity. They just end with another group. They just end with the, they just the first, they looking at the back of the neck or the person in front of them. Some of them looking at the heels of the person in front of them. They just trying to keep going. They are no longer individuals. They're all one group. They do what you say immediately. You break them down to a child's acceptance. And then you build them back up. Marine Corps tough. Army tough. That's what you do. The most men, are, they got a whole system designed to do that. It's just you and a 16-year-old. He might break your ass down. That mama, that baby mama send that boy to your house at 16 years old, especially if you got some other kids. He's going to make your house a living hell because he think he knows. And then on top of that, he filled up with all the foolishness that his mama has loaded him up with about you and manhood. Are y'all with me? It don't feel like y'all with me. 
I don't feel like you guys are here. I don't, I don't see the chat room popping right now. I don't see it. Y'all hit the number one button. We'll be right back. Hopefully y'all figure this out. This is the Blizzard King. I am the Blizzard King. Now, what does that actually mean? What that means is I represent that cold shoulder that you're going to begin to feel from black men. And we see you for who you are, black woman. We see you for the hate-filled individuals that you become because of your selfishness and your waywardness and your falling away from morality and what the most high God wants for you. But let me tell you the difference between you and that white woman. That white woman stood by her man through 500 years of blood and guts. She stood by her man. And whether she liked it or not, she was right on board with him dominating this world. The Asian woman has been oppressed. The Asian man has been oppressed by 500 years of, of, of white male domination. So has the Native American and the Indian in India and the African and the Arab man, everybody. It's the white man's time to rule. Everybody gets a chance. Black people had 80,000 years and you sat next to the black man when he ruled. For the past 500 years, the white man is ruled and guess what you do? Instead of being good companions and getting in line and waiting your turn again, you wanna crap all over the black man, even the ones that mean you well. So ladies, you're being replaced. And here's the thing, I'm not gonna be nice to you about it. See, I'm not like Kevin Samuels. He tried to do right by you. He tried to teach you, but I've realized you're gonna hate me anyway. So what I'm gonna do is give you a reason to hate me. So when I'm called home to my ancestors, all that you say will be justified. And I'm okay with that. realize where y'all at <laughs> i've been gone for a couple of days man look like y'all done got lazy y'all forgot where y'all at look if you haven't subscribed to the page i need you to subscribe now i need 42 people to subscribe to my page so i can get six thousand. uh let me see how many people i need so i can get uh, uh i can get fifty nine thousand five hundred. that leaves me only that that means i only need 500 people to subscribe to my channel so I can have 60,000. That puts me, that's, that's big time, man. That's big time. I appreciate that. So y'all, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, subscribe to the now. If you've been subscribed to the channel, I want you to subscribe again because more likely than not, you've been unsubscribed. So what do I want you to do? I want you to unsubscribe and resubscribe to my channel to get the algorithm popping. Go ahead and do that for me right now. Show your love, man. Appreciate what you guys do for me. And uh, and uh, and this is uh, greatly appreciated you that my man black man swimming said it's very difficult, nearly impossible to install masculinity into a young man once he passes the age of nine. It is. It's just hard as hell because they got too much fear in them. They got too much doubt in them. Uh, they 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 watch their mother. They they develop female coping mechanisms. It's damn near impossible to do that, man. You know what I'm saying? It's Simple Shit TV. Shout out to my man, Simple Shit TV. Um, here's the thing. As I said, and as my man said, it's easier and safer to get a young boy on the right page, all right, than some post-pubescent young man. When there isn't a male in the house, you can't do it. It's hard. 
Both boys and girls need their fathers early, but especially the boys. This do it by yourself, single mother culture is failing everywhere. Now, let me tell you what they mean when they say stuff like, oh, it's easier to raise boys. They can put their clothes on. They get their hair cut once a week. They ain't got to braid no hair. These lazy ass broads. Boys are easier to manage. Girls, you got to cut that. You got to braid their hair. You got to do all this other stuff. And let me, let me get you, let me, I'm going to give y'all a little taste. Some of you guys have asked me a question a lot. And I've had an opportunity to think about it. I have boys. And somebody asked me, well, what would you do if you were raised girls? So I was talking to my fiance about it. And for the most part, you know, I anticipate that she's going to have some girl babies because shit. That probably was going to happen. You see? The odds are in the favor that Uncle D is going to get some little girl baby. Okay? That's the odds are. Those are the odds. Three boys in a row. It's only low. So last, my bad and streak can last. <laughs> Shout out to Uncle D. I'm going to have to show you guys. You gotta, I'm going to have to just a technique you got to use to get boy babies. Okay? You got to, you got to, you got to bat down. Okay, you got to know how to, you know, you got to be aggressive up in there, man. When you, when you lay in that pipe, you know what I'm saying? I'm going to have to show you. I'm gonna, Maybe I have to put a pamphlet together or something like, man. You guys got all them girl, all you girl dads out there. I seen dudes with four or five girl babies. Like, damn, you ain't doing it right, man. You're messing up. First, you got to get you some brown liquor. That's, that's the first thing. You want to have a boy, baby, you got to get that brown liquor in you. You got to get that brown liquor in her, okay? That's the first thing, okay? I'm just trying to help you out. You got to get them, you got to get them boy runners a chance. And so she's going to have to be real flexible, all right? Because them girl ones, they, they move quick. So you got to get them, you got to get them, them boy runners, them swimmers, you got to get them, you got to get that brown liquor. I, I suggest ENJ, Hen Dog, okay? That's, that's what you need to do. I'm trying to tell you, I'm a pro at this. I done got two different women pregnant, three boys, back to back to back, in a row, okay? You got to be aggressive. You got to have a good back, strong knees, okay? You're going to gonna have to do, do you some, my, my, what I suggest you do to prepare, get you some lunges in, okay? Put them 25 pounds on each side with that bar, get them, get them lunges in, all right? Three sets of 10, on each leg, work your way up. You Got to get them bear crawls in, and bear crawls in them burpees. And then you're ready. Okay, then you're ready to get your boy, baby. But, but you got to have that brown liquor. Okay? It's got to be that brown liquor. Okay, you got to be physically ready. You get your breathing down, too. You got to get your breathing right. <sighs> it's, it's a lot. There's a lot that goes into making boy babies. Uncle, I'm, I'm, I'm telling you, Uncle D was something else back in the day, man. I'm telling you. Get you some good... Good solid, you know, good solid pregame in. You understand? And you get it, get it back, and it got to be after twelve o'clock at night. Okay, got to be after twelve o'clock at night. Ain't no boy babies popping up in the middle of the day. All right, that little lunchtime fling. Mm -mm, that's gonna be a girl baby. Ain't nothing but a headache. Okay, you want that girl that but boy baby got to be after twelve at night. Got to have that brown liquor in you. You got to have stamina. Okay. That bench pressing ain't gonna do it. You gotta, you gotta get them legs together if you want them boy babies. All right, now I'm, I'm serious. Trying to help y'all. Y'all gonna be stuck with a girl baby. You're gonna be mad. Paying for prom, getting the hair done every week. You ain't gonna be happy about it. Gonna be teaming up on your ass with your baby mama, mom, dad, dad, mom says she. Y'all don't want that. I got boys. Everybody on my side in the house. Okay. Anyway, let's get back to the subject matter at hand. But um, y'all need some help. Let me know. I'll Uncle D be more than happy to tell you youngsters how to get you a boy baby about one of these gals. Okay? All right. Praise Moses. Anyway, what am I saying? Um, so, again, the young ladies, they think just because these little boys are, eat, are manageable at that age, uh, they always going to be like that. But that's not how it works. Okay? That's not how it works. It don't work like that. Let me tell you something big man said. 
head and shoulders, knees and toes, knees and head. No, no, bro. No, that ain't how it works. You you got you got to, you got to, and, and you can't get no no pregame for yourself. You got to save all that up. Okay, that you 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 need to abstain for about a week and a half for two weeks, and then you need to go on in there strong with that brown liquor. I, I'm telling y'all don't know y'all don't y'all don't want to hear me. Y'all, I'm trying to school you young men on how to get you some some boy babies. We need more boy babies. Okay, we need more y'all. Y'all not following my instruction, but anyway, my man MC uh, recovery relapse said my mama friend have a bay. He take. Of take of you and I grew up around a lot of single mamas in the South Central from other states, Mississippi, Texas, Virginia. Yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. Um, let me see that anyway. So um the other thing you gotta understand, it's easy to raise boys, it's easy to manage them because it doesn't take that much. Girls, you gotta braid their hair, take them, get their nails done. You you gotta uh <clears throat> make sure they clean, lotion, all that stuff. Boy, you put a pair a pair of pants on the boy and a shirt, put some lotion on his face and his hands, get his hair cut once a week and send him out. You see what I mean? Um, you know, and the other thing you got to understand is girls, they come with everything they need to become a woman. All you got to do is teach them a few skills, how to cook, clean, shut the fuck up. And, you know, if she, if she don't need to work out, all she needs to do is not become a big wide back road robust ass girl and she'll get a man terry higgs said keep telling black women what they need to hear and not what they want to hear and they think they're the prize but submissiveness loyalty and pride yeah all that all this miss you know yeah black women have held they have led other black women astray but we don't talk about this on that page i don't give a shit what they do i think you fellas have realized that and i'm just here for you and I'm talking to black women about black boys. Really, I'm talking to black men about black boys because at the end, what I'm going to say is, fellas, do everything you can to get your sons. You see what I'm saying? Uh, no matter how much it costs, fight, fight, fight as early as you can. Start the process early. Get your kids, get your sons especially. Um, but what I was going to say was it's easier to manage boys when they get older, when, they get young, when they're younger. But see, when they get older, it's a problem. Girls, on the other hand, they're born with everything they need. As long as they are not fat as hell, they do. They can cook moderately good, okay? Uh, you know, they don't even have to be goddamn cute these days because dudes have so much, such low standards. If a woman is thin, hell, if a woman is under 135 pounds in the United States, she damn near a 10 just on the strength that she's not a big old fat uh, 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 wide back. Look like, you, you see what I mean? That's how that works. Men in America, standards are so low. She get her nails done, put that war paint on, go out. She can get a dude, put some clip-ons in that weave in. She'll get a man. It don't take much. A 18, 19, 20, 21-year-old woman, shit, 22, she can have damn near any man out there because of her youth. And if you add to that, she know how to cook and clean and is willing to be quiet and shut the fuck up and listen to the man, man, shit. She could write her own ticket for that short uh, period of time between about 18 to about 23. She don't even need education. Don't even have to have a car, driver's license or nothing. Some man will pick that woman up. It should You should be able to get rid of your daughters real quick if you raise them right. If you raise them up cooking and cleaning and they don't have a whole bunch of tattoos, they know how to talk to a man and be sweet and smile at a motherfucker. Most men to pick them up. You see what I mean? And not only that, they can get them a wealthy man between those ages. And they're not all fat and out of shape and shit. And that's for the most part across the board, a young woman can easily get an older man who's successful. A young man has got to prove himself. You see, a young man has got to prove himself. He literally got to build himself up from nothing. And on top of that, as a young man, you can get dogged out and treated badly. And your raggedy ass mama will tell you, oh, that's just being a man. Be a man. She's socking you all in your chest, halfway feeding you, leaving your home at night. Ain't paying no attention to you. Ain't read no bedtime stories to you. Okay? None of that shit. Most of you do is bring you some goddamn cold medicine and 
rub some Vicks vapor rub on your chest and tell you to be a man. That's what they do. They don't need that. You you get your hair cut once a week, maybe twice, uh, um, maybe maybe uh, twice a month, depending. And that's it. We low maintenance, so we're easier to manage, especially for lazy bitches. Y'all know that. Some of these women that are raising sons, these are some of the laziest bitches you ever seen. They ain't got to do a goddamn thing. They don't even want to have girl children because they know they got to sit up and braid hair and press hair and pay for this little girl to go to the goddamn uh, uh, beauty salon and all that. Her weed costs as much as the other, the mama's weed. And mom don't want to share that. Then on top of that, when she start getting older, the men are looking at her and looking past the mama at the daughter. Can't keep a man in the house. That's why so many of these women are fighting, fussing with their daughters. And she look at Google that mother fights with daughter. Oftentimes the mom is jealous, but again, that ain't our issue. We talk about men's issues on this page. Big man 7917 said, TLC said, I don't want no scrubs, but I don't want no bitches bigger than me. <laughs> <laughs> sitting at a bus stop sucking on pork chops. Oh, <laughs> you got jokes. Anyway, anyway, shout out to you, man. <laughs> hey, yeah, I'm right. You ain't got to be beautiful, ladies. These these stand these men's standards are low. They, they are low as snake pussy. You understand what I'm talking about? I know I'm getting a little vulgar. Let me cut it out. They are lower than a snake's belly, okay? If you are under, if you are under 135 pounds, you are damn near all automatically a dime. There's no such thing as ugly women in the modern world. It's just poor women. What does that mean? That's the saying that comes out of Colombia. In other words, if you under 130 pounds, you can have them surgeries and get the, the breast put on and get your nose, the rhinoplasty, and all that stuff. You know, you can do all that. Okay, so women got. From that first five years, from about 18 to about 23, 24, shit. You have damn near any man you want. Damn near any man you want. Boys, no. They go from being little boys that are easily managed to young men that that got to find their way in the world. And if they don't have another, if they don't have a man that has taught them, that has done it themselves, you got a problem. And let me explain something else to you. I want to I want to I want to talk to you guys for a minute. I want y'all to hear me on this. We got a lot of dudes on the internet. A lot of men on the internet that want to tell y'all what you should do and how to be successful. A lot of men on the internet that come through and tell y'all how to be successful. But here's the problem with that. They're only successful because this YouTube and this Cash App and this PayPal thing popped up, and now they're able to make money. And they equate that with real-life success. That's not success. They didn't succeed in the real world. They succeeded in the virtual world. And let me tell you something else. The FBI is soon going to bring this shit to an end. Prediction. The FBI is going to bring this shit to an end. The IRS is going to bring all this to an end because a lot of these dudes on the internet ain't paying taxes. You're dealing with a situation where you got 100% profit, literally no overhead. You understand me? 100% 100% profit, no overhead. All you need is a computer and a camera. And you can get on the internet and talk and talk and talk. And people will pay you because you become some sort of guru, some sort of uh, uh, authority, some sort of uh, expert, having never been qualified to do anything. But see, here's the problem with that, man. If you've taken advice from losers or people who haven't actually won in life, what you're doing is um, you're listening to somebody who's speaking in theory, not in practice. You understand? 
You're listening to somebody who's only telling you what they think to be true. And every now and then they'll get right. You know, they might speak to, you know, 80,000 people a day and, you know, a couple of people to follow some instructions and they'll be like, oh, yeah, man, I, I got my trucking license listening to such and such. You see what I mean? Even a, a, a broke clock is right twice a day. But they don't have any practical experience. They don't know what it's like in the real world. The reason is so prophetic What you guys, some of you say I'm a prophet because of some of the shit that I say. No, I know how the world works. I know how the world works, fam. I know how business works. This is big business that we're dealing with right here. And at some point, it's going to be, at some point, competition is going to get stiff and it's going to get regulated. And just like any other business, you need to figure out your niche and you not, you need to not cash your net too wide. My man Blue Lion said, Joe Biden going to take all the money and redistribute it to these hoes by way of student loan debt forgiveness. Y'all hear what I'm saying? You got to stop listening to all these dudes on the internet who proclaim to be gurus who who are giving you advice life advice and they haven't actually done that themselves they're not successful in the real world i showed you my success i'm a lawyer who is successful there are people who are real estate agents who are successful and they can show you their receipts they can show you what they've done Anybody who's not willing to show you what they've done, identify themselves to you, that's not someone you want to listen to because they're only speaking in theory and they don't know how this actually works. They're just talking and repeating things that they heard from other people who are actually successful in real life. I don't mind showing you my resume. All my information and who I am is out there. You see the woman I'm dating, I should give y'all dating advice, but I don't. At a certain point, I had too many broads. <laughs> and it got like, eh, what's the point? Because I recognize in the United States, if you got money, you ain't nothing, don't really matter. Bitches see you popping bottles in the goddamn club or you popping Don Perignon and that, that, that Ace of Spades shit. I don't even like that shit. You pulling up in the Bentleys and the old schools and whatnot, they like, he got money to burn. Women are attracted to money and power, period. All that game, all that blah, 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 that's just hot air coming out your mouth. That don't matter. Women are attracted to money and power, period. Understand that. And when you recognize that, you'll gravitate towards money and power, period. End of discussion. I don't need no, I don't want, I'm, let me tell you something like this. If I, if I got to go run up on the broad and convince her to be with me with game, that's beneath me. That's beneath me to sink myself to have to try to chop it up with some bitch to convince her to want to be with me. If the bitch can't smell motherfucking ball and boss nigga shit coming off of my ass, the bitch ain't worthy of being with me. You understand what I'm saying? That's my attitude. That's arrogant. And it's a whole lot of other things. It's egotistical. But fuck that. That's where I'm coming from. Bitch, when I walk in, you need to, all heads need to bow. That's how I feel when I walk, when I walk in. And that's not a game. You understand me? And that's how you need And when you get to that point, that's the attitude you need to, bitch, I'm the shit. Fuck you, <laughs> okay? <laughs> Fuck what you talking about. I'm the shit up in here. Bow down, bitch. Go get me a drink. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Uh, matter of fact, I already bought the bar. That's how you're supposed to feel. You 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 cheapen yourself, and I know I'm off subject. Forgive me, you know I, I know I'm off subject, but 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 again, this is the attitude that my sons have. I tell them all the time: when you walk in the club or when you walk in a social event, if you're gonna talk to any woman, you talk to the finest one in that motherfucker, man. You understand? You always talk. You don't settle for the bitch holding the purses, the fat bitch. The, the, you, hell no. <laughs> hell no. You don't do that. You talk to the baddest one up in there, and if she ain't talking about nothing, the rest of them ain't worth your time. 
My man, Big Man 7917 said, these hippos hoes will wear Wednesday panties on Good Friday. Ah, praying for a man while they have a weight, <laughs> have the weight of three men. Oh, my God. That's some good shit. Where's Deacon Salty Balls at? Man, I ain't seen him in a minute. Man, where's De- Deacon Salty Balls? We need some more prep. But, yeah, what I'm saying, man, yeah, that's what I'm instilling in my sons. You you understand? You you Yeah. Not no, we don't do no second race shit. We winners over here. You understand? Y'all call it big dick energy. You you just got winner energy. You're a winner. You're a winner. You're successful. You success breeds success. Again, y'all need to stop listening to these YouTube gurus. They haven't proven themselves in the real world. And if they hide in their faces, is because they don't want to be exposed by the people who know them for the failures that they are. These motherfuckers is driving old cars, living in apartments, paying their rent with y'all cash out money, telling you their success. And my man Wrench Turner said, the cold part is that you have corners of YouTube where unproductive MFers spend hours talking about BS and other unproductive MF. Yeah. The reason that they got so many people following their channel is because unproductive motherfuckers know what other unproductive motherfuckers want to hear. You understand what I'm saying? (laughs) It's a little Indian lady on this channel. I think she got like 25,000 followers. She make a million dollars a year with 25,000 subscribers. She talk about finance. She holds retreats. She live over here by me. She live about a a mile away from where I live. 25,000 subscribers, making a million dollars a year. Hosting retreats, doing private sessions, those sort of things. You understand what I'm saying? Mm, mm, mm. So it's not about the number of people you have. It's actually... Who's gravitating to your channel? See, let me tell you who's on my channel. We got people like Wrench Turner. We got people like, uh, uh, we got a lot of other people who who follow the channel. They they get what I'm saying. Because, see, I'm talking to them the same way I talk to my own sons. It's the same way the men in their lives, the successful men in their lives, talk to them. You understand? My man, uh, Jay Renard Levis said, plan on retiring early outside the U.S. in about 10 years. The way things are going now, it may be less than five. Got to do right by me. Yeah, man. But yeah, broke motherfuckers know how to appeal to other broke motherfuckers. You understand me? So yeah, they're going to have a lot of people follow. All that mess and foolishness they talk about over there, they're not talking about developing men. They're not talking about... Shout out to my man, Atlanta Street Interviews. They're not talking about being they're not putting forth success they can't show you what their lifestyle look like they can't show you their children they're not showing you their houses they're not showing you what they look like they selling you a facade that's all they can do that's all they got so you need to stop and, and i know that's off the subject a little bit but i'm talking about the influence and you need to you fellas need to stop Listening to all these people on the internet, they just leading you astray, man. These, we went from the church leading you astray to these pro blackity blacks leading you astray. And now you got these internet gurus leading you astray. They know you're ignorant people. They know you're looking for leadership. I'm not your motherfucking leader. I'm going to point you in the right direction and say, that's the direction that I would head in if I was you. But you can go if you want to go. I'm already where I need to be. You understand? That's where I'm at. This ain't no monopoly I'm running over. This is not a dictatorship. I'm not going to have y'all out there protesting and shit like that. I'm not doing that. I just want you to be the best man you can be. And I'm tired of you brothers getting bamboozled, hoodwinked, and led astray by these suckers. And that's what you got. A lot of suckers out here. They little men. Little tiny motherfucking men that are not significant, that are going to die and nobody's going to give a fuck. They have never left an imprint on the world. 
All they do is sit around and talk shit. They ain't going to do shit. They like hoes. I'm just saying. Anyway, and back to the subject matter at hand. We talking about kids and we talking about little boys. We talking about for the first six years of a little boy's life, that's critical in their development. It's in this time that they're the most impressionable. They absorb information like sponges. They readily seek up, soak up information. That's where their foundation is laid for their beliefs. That's, that's, that's why they love the people that take care of them when they're little. And see, the thing is, like Frederick Douglass said, it's easy to build strong children and repair broken men. And what you got to do, you got to train up the child the way you want him or, or him or her or he or she uh, to be so they won't depart from it. Now, I'm going to give you all a little bit of game when we come back. I'm going to kind of explain to you guys how I raised my sons. And uh, I think that'll be helpful to you guys. I'm, I'm giving you the roadmap. But anyway, we'll be right back. Y'all hit the number one button. Uh, Prism has come to me with something. So everybody, please listen. She's going to be talking at length, but this is extremely important, I feel. So with that said, uh, Prism, you have the floor. Hey, everybody. I don't know if everybody's aware of what's going on in um, YouTube. Are you aware? If you are aware of the situation with the attorney, can you please put a one in the chat, please? Yeah, everybody put a one in the chat if you know what what person we're talking about. If you don't, um, basically, we have a lawyer who's positioning himself to be the next Kevin Samuels. But Kevin Samuels, while people would make fun of him and stuff, wasn't that dangerous. This guy, if he has his way, is going to be. Um, this, this guy's a problem, and it's something that needs to be addressed. Yeah, welcome back to the broadcast. So, here's the thing, family. Um, first of all, I don't let my sons listen to everybody. They, they, don't, they don't take advice from... Uh, I don't let them take advice from weak men. Matter of fact, they reject weak-minded men. And they can tell the difference when they see them. Shout out to my man, DSG, BXL. Thank you for the super chat, bro. I appreciate, uh, appreciate that. Um, and why? It's because they've been surrounded by strong men. How do I start them off? First of all, when they was little, I'll tell you a little story. My little, my oldest son, uh, he was about, I guess, eight, nine months old and a sweet boy. Then by the time he started going to uh, daycare, he started picking up some bad habits. And his mama said he was falling out on the floor. And so I don't chastise them for shit that I didn't see them do. Okay, I'm like the police. You understand? I got to see you do it. And then you get your punishment. So he fucked around and fell out on the, in the middle of my floor here at my house. And I grabbed his ass up by one hand, spanked him on his bottom, and put him in timeout and told him don't ever do that shit again. It's easy to do that when they're one years old. So discipline was instilled. I got another son. He used to cry himself to sleep at night. You cry, he, he, he cries himself. To, you wake me up, you scared of the dark. I'm going to come in the room and give you something to be scared of. Now, that's not an infraction that's worthy of corporal punishment. So what do I do? He woke me up, jumped down on the floor, give me 10 push-ups on your knuckles. And we talking about a one-year-old. One-year-olds can't do push-ups on their knuckles. Okay, the little toe, the little fingers are soft. They can't do it. But he thought he was doing push-ups on his knuckles. And when he got back up in the bed, he went to sleep and he was quiet. You see what I'm saying? So, on to, but see, here's the thing. That first year and a half, two years is consistent. You see what I mean? I tell my boys all the time, I'm going to whoop your ass for three reasons. Stealing, okay? Fighting with your brother, a lying to me. Let me run that back by y'all again. Stealing, fighting with your brother, a lying to me. I didn't say lying to everybody else, lying to me. I didn't say fighting against everybody else. I said fighting your brother. And when I say stealing, that's stealing value from somebody else. Taking something that belongs to them. What does that mean? Well, obviously, if you're stealing shit out the store, I'm going to whoop your ass. The other thing is, if you uh, destroy somebody's property, that's stealing because you're taking away value from them. I'm going to whoop your ass. Um... Those are, those are two examples of stealing. Lying to me. Why? Don't lie to me. You can lie to every goddamn body else. Don't lie to me.
because I'm the only one that's going to get you out of that shit that you in. I tell my sons all the time. Your mama, you lie to her all the time when she tell her, do I look fat? No, mom, you know, of course you don't look fat. You know the fuck well she look fat. But you lie anyway. <laughs> you understand what I'm saying? Uh, and unfortunately, that's just one of those things that men are forced to do because women do that. So I'm not saying don't lie at all. Don't lie to me because I'm the only one that's going to come rescue you when you're in prison. I'm the only one that's going to come down there and kick ass when it's a problem at the school. I'm the only one that's going to have to pay when you get in trouble. Your mom ain't paying for shit. Y'all know that's the goddamn truth. Anytime your son does something good, that's because of her. When they do something bad, that's because of your ass. Y'all know that. That's how this works. Men get very little credit in this world. Only get, when if, if, if single mothers were doing an excellent job raising kids, oh my God, I did it by myself. But because single mothers are doing a horrible job of raising kids, they blame the absent father who might not even know he's the daddy. You understand? But it's consistency and establishing the rules and having conversations with your sons and coming up with creative ways to make them uncomfortable. Old school ass whoopings are always available. I like creative shit. I like holding your hands out like that wide with some keys in your hand or the older they get with some books or doing push-ups or, or bear crawls or uh, uh, horse stance, which is a military, uh, a martial arts uh, stance, the horse stance, um, and, making them, and making them deal with it and keeping promises. When, I, when you didn't do this, you're going to have to do that. There's consequences. And so at an early age, you instill discipline in these kids. And see, I'm not one to deal with these emotional issues. My son, my youngest son, he don't, he has, a, his mother was telling me he has abandonment issues. What does that mean? She was taking his ass to school one day and he don't like to go to school. So instead of going in the schoolhouse, he hop on the side of the road and fall out crying and shit. As she driving away, she crying, he crying. You know what I'm saying? He was three or four years old. You, you, you got a three or four year old is whooping your ass already. So she sent him out to me. He tried that shit with me. His brothers went home to their mother. So instead of in not crying, he decided to ride all over my shit, destroy property. That's stealing. So he got corporal punishment for that. Never had that problem with him again. I get it. Some of y'all want to take y'all children to the psychiatrist every time they cry. Some of you motherfuckers want to take your children to the psychologist and put them on medicine every time they do something that's out of pocket. Motherfucker can't learn one plus one is two. You, They telling you, oh, he must have a learning deficiency. No, he doesn't give a shit about who's teaching him that. So you got to teach your kids. <laughs> you got to make your kids give a shit, especially boys. That cute shit that little boys do, that, they, that doesn't work with daddy. And a lot of you women are too stupid and emotional to get out the way and allow these boys to be raised by men. You're enablers. You enable this behavior. You complain about the modern men we have. You bitches have been in the way for decades. You want men to get tougher? You want them to be harder? Get the fuck out the way and let men raise boys to be men. And y'all go back to the corner. You're the problem, ladies. You hard-headed broads are the problem. You know what? We got so much crime in the motherfucking community because you bitches won't get out the, lay, out the way and let us whoop these motherfuckers' asses, whoop their ass, shoot them down like dogs for stealing and robbing and murdering. It would end. But as long as you tie good men's hands behind our back, and you protect the low lowlifes, and you protect these badass kids from the discipline that they would otherwise receive, you're going to keep having these problems. See, some of y'all are not bold enough to say that. Some of y'all want to be politically correct. All the great societies in the past have taken their children, the ones that we give a shit about, have taken their sons through some sort of rite of passage. 
Not this one. We treat our little boys like they're little girls. Now you motherfuckers want to put them in skirts. Tell them it's okay to, okay to, uh, okay to play with baby dolls and wear pink bows and shit. You allow them to be trippy. You weird ass Americans. You allow them to be trippy. That's what they say about us. Bunch of fucking weird ass Americans. Allow your children to, to dictate the policies of your country. And you wonder why we where we are. My man DSGBXL said, teaching my son martial arts and teaching him to compete and prepare for competition. The mindset he has to have, the discipline goes a long way. Corporate punishment is not off the table. I need him to grow up and be a man. Yeah. Let me tell you something. If you don't whoop your kid, your son's ass, the police will. We got a problem with discipline in this country. My man, Rich Turner, the only charge I ever caught was for correcting my son. Imagine that. Ain't that a bitch? Yeah. That's what they do. See, these single mothers, you know, they deny the father access to the children until the little motherfucker get out of control. And then she send this motherfucker in like Al-Qaeda to invade your motherfucking house when he becomes a monster. A monster that she created. You got a little Osama bin Laden up in this motherfucker with you now. <laughs> Destroying your life. You ain't seen this nigga in 16 years, right? So you dropped him off at, in his mom and he showed up. He's a terror. Up there knocking down all your shit, still in your car, don't want to listen, sleep all day. And now you 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 got to damn near be te- uh, uh, SEAL Team 6 on his ass to get him to do something. And he bitching and complaining and compli- compli- uh, crying to his mama. Hey, I want to come home. Yeah. And then here's the crazy part. My girl, uh, shout out to Crimson Cure. She said, just passed through paying respect to the Blizzard King. Big shout out to Crimson Cure. Thank you so much, sister. Keep up the good work. God bless you. She be, she, she make me soft. She be saying, thank you so much, sweetheart. Thank you so much. I be like, all right, I'm going to give you another $100. <laughs> she know how to talk to women. She know how to talk to men. Shout out to Crimson Cure. But anyway, you send them badass boys to our house after you done fucked them up. And they done seen you sleeping with every goddamn uh, uh, man in the neighborhood. And they supposed to have respect for womanhood. They seen too much. Number one. Number two, you done spoiled them as to manhood. You done told them their daddy wasn't shit. And every other man in their life wasn't shit. And so they don't even like the idea of manhood. A lot of you women should learn to listen to the male counterparts in your life when it comes to raising your boys. See, y'all like to keep them boys away from their real daddies. And you like to replace them with a stepdaddy or an uncle. Because at the end of the day, you could exact control over that son. You can, you can usurp or override what the stepdaddy say, because this ain't your son, that's my son. Or this you, that's your uncle. That ain't you ain't the daddy. See, you bitches like to do that shit. But see, you can't hardly tell that daddy what to do, because that's his son. And that boy is gonna have a natural affinity towards his daddy. But it's about control with these women until these little dudes get out of control. Again, at the point where they're ready to sock you in the neck. That's when you want to send them over there to the daddy. But at that point, it's too late because most men don't have the time and energy to deal with that. Not that late in in the game. The process starts early. You can avoid many pitfalls that come during the teenage years and all that trippy emotional shit that boys go through. If you deal with that, if you, you, you discipline that boy as a young child. I'm telling you this, I'm going to tell you again. Most women, and when I say most, I'm talking about 95%, are not equipped to raise a boy to be a man in this environment that we're dealing with. 
and it's especially prevalent in the black community. That's why we have so many black men in the black community who, who have lost potential. That's what we're dealing with. <clears throat> and when you ladies finally realize that when the little boy 13, 14 years old and you can't control his ass, they call the dad to come be an influence or they go search for some chump ass stepdaddy to play a role. And then guess what? Irrespective of this man's flaws or what he's been through, this, this motherfucker be an ex-convict, dope dealer, whatever the fuck he is, he instantly becomes the candidate for role model. Whoever he is, this man who has no ties to your son becomes a candidate for role model to your child because you got rid of the natural role model, i.e. the real daddy. My man, uh, big man 7917 said, these hoes more from being queens of nothing to being like men. They'll clip their tits, but won't lay bricks. Build roads, electrical work, or trucking. Yeah, man. But anyway, I sailed enough tonight. I hope you guys appreciate this conversation, man. I uh, I am um, always good to be back here with y'all. I'm not going to believe the point. But again, for you ladies, what's the message here? Well, fellas, the message is for you. I want y'all to hear this. Get your sons. Get your sons, get your sons, get your sons, get your sons at all costs. I just sent a lawyer a check for $11,000. And that's just this year. Last year, I think they got about uh, $18,000 because I've been in a child support battle for the past 18 years, uh, for the past eight years with my baby mama. I am not going to quit. You understand what I'm saying? It doesn't matter how much money it costs. I am not going to quit fighting to get my sons. Now, I know it looked like Uncle D got money. Yeah, but I don't like to waste money. Period. Now, if I could work something out with this broad like I did my ex-wife, I would. But I can't work out with the baby mama. And that's another thing. You have more rights when you get married and have children, fellas. But do your best to have children when you get married. Don't make the mistake of me. Get all confident and shit. Well, you know, I tame that one bitch. I can do the other one like it. Don't work like that. It's better to get married because you have more rights over your children. You understand me? But if you fuck around and make the mistake, part of being a man is what? Dealing with the consequences of your mistake. That's my motherfucking mistake. I got a loose son out there that needs his daddy and need to be raised. And so I'm going to do what I got to do no matter how much it costs, no matter how long the fight is. Eight years since 2015, even before he was born, I had them paperwork, that paperwork file. Been spending thousands and thousands of dollars a year fighting this battle. You understand? Because it don't stop when you have your sons. You understand me? Keep fighting. And at the end of the day, one or two things are going to happen. Either I'm going to get my son or my son is going to say, well, damn, my daddy been fighting since I was, before I was born for me. And he's going to be looking at his mama's side eye and saying, damn, bitch. <laughs> you can't even afford to take care of me. I'm over here living broke. My brother's a doctor and the one is a lawyer and they got a big house and they do good and they go on vacations all the time. Man, you got me over here broke. What's the point? You understand? But you don't quit when it comes to your children, boys, fellas. You don't quit, especially your boy children. Again, if I had a daughter, I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to tell y'all the truth. If I had a daughter, my man Zoom to Thailand live. Thank you so much for the $10. If I had a daughter, things would be different. Why? Because daughters are different. Women get treated differently in this world. 
You got a cute little girl, she can get away with murder. Y'all damn near literally can get away with murder. Especially if she's uh, attractive. The judge gonna cut her a break. The police gonna cut her a break. The judge, uh, 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 the prosecutor's gonna cut her a break. She doesn't have to be, she doesn't have to deal with the consequences that men have to deal with. Not in that realm. So I don't have to, if she crying in the middle of the night, go to sleep, make her do some push up. You ain't got to do that. You get up, you hold her. Oh, my darling, my lovely darling girl, child. I love you to death. Come on, go back to sleep. I'll read your bedtime story. Little boys. Hey man, shut the fuck up. Go to sleep. Do some push ups. Uh, uh, if you keep crying, you're going to do some more push ups. Those are consequences because the world is harder on men than it is on women. Period. That's the difference. Somebody is always going to come coddle some woman. The government is going to take care of women. So you're going to raise your daughters different than you raise your boys. But the thing is, I love being a man. I wouldn't trade it. I wouldn't trade it for anything. I'm, I thank God I went through the crucible to get to manhood, especially being a successful man. Damn sure wouldn't want to be a woman. They get their bullshit on the back end when they make mistakes. That's what happens to women. Bad shit happens to women who make mistakes early in life. If a woman ain't off the market early on and she got her a good man who's stable, she got a problem. But for the most part, she gonna catch breaks all the way up till she like 35 years old. And then the sisterhood gonna take care of her. Men, we don't have that. Emmett Ben Israel, thank you for the $5 super sticker. So yeah, I would definitely raise my girl child differently than I would raise my boy child. It wouldn't be so much focused on consequences. It would be more focused on helping her learn to be a helpmate and teaching her what to look for in a man. Being a good example of manhood to her mother so she can know what she's looking for. What does that mean? Broken blade, $3 super sticker. Well, my little girl, she going to be in that kitchen with her mama when she's old enough to walk. Even if she thinks she's, even if she not cooking or cleaning, she going to think she is. Shout out to Laverne Gibbs, Blizzard King cooking tonight. You understand what I'm saying? Just like my little one-year-old, I said, do 10 push-ups on your knuckles and stop goddamn crying and get back in that bed and go to sleep. He wasn't doing push-ups on his knuckles, but he thought he was. My little one-year-old daughter, she might not be cooking in with her mama, but she thought it. So she's going to make a good wife to some man. She's going to have baby dolls and kittens and puppies and shit to play with. So she's going to learn how to be a nurturer. She's going to cook and clean with her mother. She's going to serve her brothers and, and her father. When they come in, she's going to smile at us. These sort of things. I'm going to teach her what? Her mother's going to teach her how to be a good helpmate to a man, a successful man. That shit ain't just for every man. No, again, you be polite and kind, kind to all men, but for the most part, you ain't going to be in the presence of all men because you're going to be with your daddy or your brother when you're out in the public. And at the point where you're 18, 19, 20, 21 years old, your ass need to be in a serious relationship because we're going to get rid of your ass. Those are your years to find your man. And do I want my 20-year-old to marry a, uh, a man in his late 30s or early 40s? Hell motherfucking yes. <laughs> yes, I do. You understand me, BX brother? Jewels are being dropped tonight. Yes, motherfucker, I do. I want my daughter who is in her early 20s, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, I want her to find a motherfucker who has a house, who's been working for 20 years, who got a career or whatever, and marry. That's what I want. And I want him not to send her back to us. By the time she get 40, his old ass is going to be damn near dead. Okay? She get him with two kids, raise them kids, be helpful, be beautiful, be fit, be feminine, 
This is what I want. I don't want my 20 year old daughter marrying some 20 year old sucker that don't know his ass from a hole in the ground. You understand? <clears throat> Cause I don't want her to come back. Once we get rid of you, you belong to him, you his problem. Yes, let me say this again. I want you motherfuckers to hear me clearly. When I have a daughter and she's in her 20s, before she even get in her 20s, I'm going to say, you need to marry a man who's older, who's established, who's successful. <clears throat> That's what I want you to do, sweetheart. I want you to take all that beauty and all that training that your mama has gave you and don't waste that on the, one of these young suckers right around here. They haven't proved themselves. They run around here like dogs with the little pink thing sticking out the front, running the street, trying to stick it in everything they can. That's what I want. A successful man in his late 30s or 40s who's proven himself over a 20-year time period. He has homes, cars, financial shit straight that he's not going to send her back to me. And some of y'all are saying, well, why well, younger men can take care? Yeah, but the motherfuckers ain't proved themselves. Some of these motherfuckers who look like they can take care of you are one paycheck away from poverty. I want somebody with a track record. 20 years, 25 years of doing well for themselves. Business owners, investments, investment, layer after layer. And on top of that, you realize man, the, the old man, older man is going to see a younger woman as a prize. These young motherfuckers don't see these women as a prize. Let's tell the truth. Can we change the subject real quick? You young motherfuckers are 20 years old. You don't see these young 20 year old girls as a prize. Then you want to, you look, you still looking for a titty. You still need a mama. You probably go home and sleep in your mama's bed and shit. Y'all don't need a woman. Y'all need a mama. Let's keep it 100. It's when you get older, you realize it and you built yourself up and you made yourself successful. That's when you realize, yeah, okay, I need a woman. I done fucked around, got a whole bunch of hoes and shit. And I got all this money. Now I'm ready to have children. I need a good, respectable woman to be with. That's the type of woman that I want to have. Raised up in my house, i.e. my daughter. That's the type of woman I'm with now. Some of y'all don't like that. I don't give a shit. Let's put your resume next to my resume. Let's put your children res let's let, let's put your child raising skills next to mine. I can show you what my product is. I should I can show you my life success. So I'm not speaking from a hypothesis. I'm speaking from actual put it in play. You understand what I'm saying? Some of y'all just fucking stupid. <laughs> Let me just keep it 100 with you. You speaking in theory. Your ego won't allow you to take this truth and absorb it. Your ego won't allow you. See, you looking at your own self-interest. I'm looking at the interest of myself and my legacy and my family. And I'm looking at the times that we live in. It's hard for a man to make it in this world these days. Competition is stiff. You don't know who's going to make it and who not. You don't know who has good judgment and who doesn't. The reason we don't put young motherfuckers in charge of shit, like the presidency, because they haven't proven themselves yet. They haven't done enough. You understand? I tell you men all the time, don't even get in a serious relationship until you're in your late 30s and 40s. Why? Because you haven't proven yourself. You're just wasting your time. You don't even know what type of man you're going to be. You still fucking around till you're 35. You still smashing hoes till you're 35. Some of y'all just got out of college at 22, just got out of medical school at 26. Just finished law school at 25. 
Take you five years to get set up. Now you're 30. You want to spend some of that money. You want to fuck around for about five or six years or more. So you ain't got all of that out of you till you're in your late 30s and 40s. And those are the successful men. How long does it take you to build up a business? Whether it's a law business, a, a insurance business, it takes for that first five years is a motherfucker. You struggling, you trying to learn on the job. This the, the learning curve is steep. I ain't talking about no virtual motherfuckers either. I ain't talking about no internet business. I'm talking about a business where your money is tracked. You putting your money in the bank. Uh, you got to pay taxes. You need an accountant. You got to pay payroll. That's the type of business I'm talking about with multiple employees, not a fucking hair weed business, not an out pop the trunk business. So again, it all goes back to late thirties and early forties. That's when you finally get to the point of like, okay, I got this under control. I don't want my, I don't want you using my daughter up. Do them early years. You on her back and she's working and shit trying to have kids and fuck that. Hell no. Nah. Let us know when you get to where you need to be and then we'll see how you look. Because see, just like the hundreds of thousands of dollars and all the time and energy I've invested in my sons, I'm going to do the same thing for my daughters. She's going to be polite, know how to dance professionally, like bachata, salsa, have been taught by professional dancers, proper etiquette classes, perfect teeth, hair, makeup, uh, all of that, know how to act when she's in, in a formal setting, no motherfucking tattoos. You get disowned for having tattoos in my house. You get the fuck out. See what I'm saying? So you're going to get you a real-life lady when we ain't got nothing but hoes out here speaking multiple languages, teach, help you run how to, how to run a business, physically fit, know how to cook, know about nutrition, this is the shit that I'm going to install in my daughter. Just like my sons know how to protect themselves, they're mannerable, know how to fight, well-educated. You understand what I'm saying? Because my children are my investment, whether they're boys or girls. It's just a different way of raising them. Now, do I think I can raise a girl? Hell no. All that shit, my wife is going to teach them that. You understand? My wife is going to teach her all those feminine care. I'm going to do what? Make sure she has what? The discipline and the boundaries she needs, but it's not as intense as with the boy. And also understand that this is what a man looks like. This is what a man is supposed to do. And any man that says you're spoiled for wanting him to meet these minimum requirements, that's just not the man for you. That motherfucker's too young. Rich motherfuckers don't give a shit. Successful men don't give a shit about taking care of their women. They're not their woman, their wife. Successful men don't care about that. They know what's really important. Planting that seed in fertile ground. Making sure they got a woman who is fit, who is feminine, who is cooperative, who is humble, who can take instructions. Shit, that's what doctors and lawyers and business uh, tycoons want. You understand me? But anyway, I appreciate y'all, baby. This is Uncle Dean. I've had a good time with y'all. I haven't went off subject a little bit. I'm happy to be back. God bless you all. Shout out to everybody in the chat room. Shout out to everybody who came through. And uh, nevertheless, as I say at this time, man, this is Uncle D. And I'm out. <laughs>